Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and also uh, thank you, uh, Professor Zhang and Dr. Zhang Ningning for your invitation. <coughs> uh, so uh, today I'm going to present my uh, uh, the recent research work of my research uh, group. Uh, it's about the efficient uh, geotechnical reliability analysis based on adaptive ensemble learning model. So I also would like to thank my co-authors uh, this research was cooperated, conducted by Mr. Uh, Liu Yadong, uh, a candidate uh, 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 PhD, and also uh, assistant professor uh, Yang Ziyong, also from Sun Yat-sen University. And also this work was recently uh, published in Computers and Geotechnics. So if you are interested in it, uh, you may refer to uh, this paper. So uh, this is the outline of my presentation. So the first, I would like to introduce the background of the, the research. Uh, so we know uh, in recent, uh, in the past few decades, uh, reliability analysis has been very popular uh, in geotechnical engineering. So the idea is to uh, consider uh, various uncertainties uh, in into assessments of a geotechnical system. But uh, one problem facing uh, reliability analysis is that it usually demands huge computational efforts. Take this uh, very classical uh, Monte Carlo simulation equation, for example, we can see that if you want to, uh, if, uh, you, you want to estimate uh, the failure probability of a system where we cap accurately, you may have to uh, repeatedly evalu evaluate the performance function of, of a geotechnical system for many, many times, uh, say about uh, 100,000 or even a million times. And if this uh, performance function is uh, a, in a very simple form, then the computational uh, demands is still acceptable. Unfortunately, uh, because uh, most geotechnical problems are very complex. So their performance functions are usually, uh, are usually very, uh, uh, are usually in, in, implicit and may be defined by a time consuming finite element model or finite uh, difference model. So evaluation of uh, the performance function for one time takes many time, let alone for uh, thousands of times. So in order to, uh, 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 to relieve uh, this uh, computational burden, uh, surrogate, uh, surrogate model-based reliability analysis has been popularly uh, used. The idea is to uh, replace the uh, complex uh, performance function by a, by a, surrogate, uh, a surrogate model. Uh, which is less computationally uh, load uh, uh, demanded. Uh, by doing this, the computational efficiency can uh, uh, be improved. However, uh, approximation of the uh, performance function by the surrogate model uh, are uh, inevitably uh, introduce extra uh, errors. And this kind of errors uh, usually depends on uh, two issues. The first one is whether a proper surrogate model is selected. As we all know, uh, the, uh, the selection of the surrogate model is often uh, problem dependent because uh, different geotechnical systems uh, usually deviate uh, dramatically from uh, each time. So a predefined surrogate model may not suit uh, the corresponding uh, system. So actually this issue is about the low patterns of a surrogate model. And the second issue is whether the sel uh, selected uh, surrogate model is well trained. So we, we know uh, for, uh, for a surrogate model, we have to uh, train it before we can uh, use it uh, in, in the analysis. However, uh, the, the and usually, uh, generally, the training error reduce, reduces when more training samples are used. However, if we, we use more training samples, 
that means we have to uh, call the uh, performance functions for more times, then the, the computational efforts will increase. And if you contradict the original uh, intentions of the surrogate model-based methods. So this issue actually is about the efficiency of a, a surrogate model-based uh, method. So here comes uh, uh, to the objective of this research is we want to propose a method which can improve the robustness and efficiency of the surrogate mo model-based method. And our method is uh, going to uh, combine the ensemble learning technique and the adaptive uh, sampling technique to solve, uh, to improve the robustness and efficiency. And uh, the detail will be uh, introduced uh, 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 below. So here comes to the uh, second part is the methodology. First of all, we, I would like to uh, simply uh, uh, introduce the the, uh, uh, the fundamentals of uh, ensemble learning techniques. So we know that uh, there, are, uh, there are many uh, individual learning algorithms are, are available. For example, uh, the frequently used uh, neural networks or support vector machines, decision sheets, uh, and others. Uh, however, the predicted performance of an individual learner is often uh, limited and problem dependent. So uh, the art of uh, ensemble uh, learning technique is to combine a diverse sets of uh, learners to improve the predictive performance and also to reduce the likelihood of an uh, unfortunate selection of a poor uh, learner. So the idea, the basic idea of uh, ensemble learning technique is actually quite uh, simple. It's the weighted average of component uh, learners. Say we have uh, several uh, uh, component learners, then uh, we, we, we go further step in the training process. We will combine them uh, by the weighted average. And so set uh, the weight factors for each component learner to form an ensemble learning. And then we use ensemble learning to uh, give uh, the output. So in this study, uh, we use the radio basis function as the component learner. So here, I also want to uh, say that uh, even though we use uh, RBF as the component learner, in this study, other, uh, other, other kinds of uh, individual learners can also be applied actually. Uh, and for this RBF, uh, the, here, here are the detailed uh, deviation. Actually, there are no big differences uh, from other, uh, other SORGO models. You have some inputs and you have some outputs. So through the training, you, you train this model so that you, you can use the uh, trained model to predict uh, a new, when, when a new uh, uh, sample comes in, you can use the trained model to predict it. So here I would like to say that uh, uh, for the radio base basis function, there are many uh, available kernel functions, uh, for example, Gaussian, multi-quadratic, and others. So if you use different kernel function, then the performance of the RBF will be different. So we in this study, uh, we use the Gaussian, multi-quadratic, and uh, linear functions uh, as the component learners. Uh, due to their uh, diverse predictive abilities. And we want to com uh, compare this uh, uh, component learners with uh, the assemble one and to see whether the assemble one can uh, improve the robustness of the model. And as for the weight of uh, factors, the calculation part is uh, using is based on a heuristic algorithm. So I'm not going to go into the detail. So actually, uh, the, the idea is that if, uh, if the, the error of a, a, a component's uh, model is, uh, is small, then the weight of, of, the mod of the model will be large. And the second part, uh, the second technique uh, is about the adaptive sampling technique which is used, actually used uh, to train 
to train the model uh, in, a, in an efficient way. So here are the uh, flow charts. The first of all, uh, we would uh, we will generate a sample pool of the uh, uncertain per, uh, parameters, uh, and then we 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 define a training data set uh, with several uh, initial samples. Of course, these initial samples can be chosen in an arbitrary way, uh, and then we use uh, the training data to uh, to train the model, to, the the ensemble model. Uh, then, then we have a, an ensemble model and use this ensemble model, we can estimate the failure probability of the system. And then we go to uh, check check uh, the criterion, the, the, the stopping criterion. Uh, uh, here we use uh, this check, uh, stopping criterion actually is uh, indicates whether the calculated failure probability has reached a stable uh, st stabilization. And if it, it has uh, reached uh, the, uh, a stable results, then we we we, go, we will end this uh, uh, procedure and and outputs the failure probability. Otherwise, otherwise we would we would uh, otherwise it means that the ensemble uh, model is still not good enough. So we will have to add add more uh, training samples. And here come and here is the. Uh, uh, the interesting thing of the adaptive sampling technique, the newly added uh, training samples are, uh, are not selected uh, uh, arbitrary. Actually, it comes from a learning function. Uh, the learning function is to uh, is defined uh, in this way. Uh, the, the, the main task of uh, this uh, learning function is to identify the most suitable candidate samples from the uh, sampling pool. Uh, which uh, should contain more information so that we can uh, use it to better train the model. And here, uh, this training function uh, has two parts. Uh, the new, the uh, numerator actually is the distance to the uh, distance between the, uh, the, the sample to the current limit state surface. Uh, if this one is smaller, then uh, the, the sample contains more information. And the second one is uh, uh, the denominator is uh, the local prediction uncertainty. If this one is large, then the sample will be more informative because uh, if the local prediction uncertainty is large, then it means this sample is very likely to be longly uh, predicted. Then it contains more uh, 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 samples. So, so after we add the new uh, add this uh, new uh, samples into the training uh, data set, we will come back to uh, this uh, step. We we'll change the we we'll change the model again, and we use the newly the updated uh, model. Then we we, we further uh, calculate the failure probability and go. Uh, uh, this uh, process goes goes on until we reach a step a uh, 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 stabilized uh, results. So the third part, I would like to use four examples to illustrate uh, this method. The first one is a, a numerical system with four components. Uh, as, let's assume that this is a uh, the actual performance functions of a system. So it have four components and has two uh, uncertain parameters. They, they both follow the standard normal distribution. Uh, the, the performance function, the actual performance function is shown in this uh, green line. We, we can see in this figure. And then we, we, we first use uh, 16 initial samples to train uh, the ensemble uh, model uh, and use this ensemble model to predict, uh, to predict the uh, critical state line of the system. And it comes uh, uh, like this uh, red one. We can see that uh, they are Quite different, quite different. So that means we need to uh, add more training samples. And based on our adapted uh, uh, learning process, we we selected this sample, the star one here, uh, as our newly uh, added training sample. We can see that this one actually lies uh, in the current predicted uh, limit state surface uh, here. And after adding this sample, we can update our prediction. 
Here, our prediction uh, changed a little bit more, but still deviate from the actual one. So we need to uh, add more samples. And here we add three samples, becomes this one. And we further goes on, uh, 15, adding 15 samples and uh, 25 samples. And finally, uh, the, our uh, procedure stop after adding 40, 34 uh, selected samples. We can see that the final uh, estimation estimated uh, critical state, uh, state line actually uh, coincides of, uh, with the actual one uh, uh, in a very good degree. Of course, uh, uh, except for the four uh, uh, short uh, corners, but they, this, this four short corners will not uh, have any, in, uh, will not uh, affect our prediction of about the failure probability because this four corner actually, uh, the, the, the probability density function uh, uh, are very small. So we, we can also see these uh, two figures. So here are the, the, uh, the y axis are the normalized failure probability. Uh, defined by the, uh, so it's the failure probability calculated by our model and divided by the benchmark failure probability. The benchmark failure probability is uh, calculated by the direct Monte Carlo simulation uh, with a million times uh, based on the original performance function. So we can see that after adding say, say about 34 uh, samples, our, research, our the estimated uh, failure probability uh, reach uh, to one. That means uh, the prediction becomes uh, uh, quite close with the benchmark. And we can also see... Uh, uh, see uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, I think uh, there are two minutes left. Okay, uh, I will go uh, quickly. So we can also see uh, these three uh, component, uh, component learners. We can see that in this one, uh, for this problem, the multi-quadratic one performs uh, better than the other two because the uh, the actual uh, performance function is actually a, a quadratic functions. So here are the other uh, other results. We can see that uh, this one is our proposed uh, model. Uh, the estimated failure probability is quite uh, close to the uh, Monte Carlo one, and we also we only need a uh, cost of fifty. Uh, times of the uh, original performance functions compared with other methods, it's also smaller. So the efficiency is also uh, uh, promised. And the second example is a stage excavation with T-back wall. So uh, in this example, the the, the performance functions, we, 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 we care about the maximum lateral wall deflection. Uh, and also, we have five uh, uncertain parameters. So we also uh, use uh, the model to predict uh, uh, the failure probability. We can see that only uh, we only need to evaluate the, uh, the, the, the performance function for about uh, 50 times, then the results can reach, uh, uh, reach that uh, estimated by the Monte Carlo simulation. And we this uh, here here are the results. We can see that if Monte Carlo simulation, we 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 calculate uh, the failure probability. It takes about one hundred hours, and with this model, we only need uh, four minutes. And the th third example is about a strip footing on mounted layers a subsoil. So uh, a strip footing uh, is laid on a three layered subsoil. And uh, we 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 consider we, we calculate the maximum settlement uh, settlement of the strip footing, and this one should be uh, smaller than a, a threshold value. So uh, we uh, in this problem we have six uh, uncertain parameters, and again we can see that uh, with this model we only need to call the uh, final element model for about twenty five times, and the time is. Uh, less than one minute compared with uh, the Monte Carlo simulation, which takes about uh, 32 uh, hours. And the final example is a slope considering spatial variability of soil properties. So in this uh, problem, uh, the 
can and, and gene series gene is uh, modeled by the random field to uh, consider the spatial variability. And again, our results, uh, the estimated failure probability is quite close, uh, quite close to the uh, to the Monte Carlo one. And the time is about 10 minutes compared with uh, 40, about 14 hours. So finally comes the conclusion. So uh, in this research, we propose a adapted uh, assemble learning. Uh, we use the, uh, by combining the assemble learning technique and adapted sampling technique to in, improve the robustness and the uh, efficiency of the uh, model. So uh, here are some references. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.